Hello, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that recently went and saw the new Brad Pitt space adventure, Ed Asner. It was good. In fact, by the end, I really wanted some... Mary Tyler Moore? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Dawn of the Peacemakers from Snowdell Design. In Dawn of the Peacemakers from Snowdell Design, one to four players will take on the role of an anthropomorphic animal as they attempt to stop a big giant war from engulfing the Earth. That's right, it's Earth where humans did not evolve, but kooky animals did. Now this is kind of a campaign game, a legacy game, so I'm not going to talk too much about uh, a lot of the things you'll see later on. Pretty much just want to limit this review to the uh, initial game, the initial scenario, to give you an idea of what's in store for you. Now, in this game, you've got two warring factions. Initially, it's the Ocelots and the Macaw. And you, the adventurers, are trying to uh, stop this war from escalating. Now, each uh, of these warring factions has a uh, kind of their, their motivation track. And generally speaking, you want to get their motivation lowered, but not too much. So essentially what's going to happen is you've got your adventurers in the middle of the board, but you've got these units from the Ocelots and the Macaw on different sides of the board. Now, their different units have different rings that are put on the bottom. Some are circles, some are stars, and some are gears. Now this is important because this is the AI is going to direct the game using these, these symbols. Now, players are going to go ahead, they're going to shuffle some various decks that you're going to be using, and the players are going to draw resource cards. Depending on the number of players, you're going to get a number of resource cards. You're going to take turns going around and around playing your resource cards. Now, resource cards have three different uh, items up in the top left corner, things you can do. One is influence, and I'll explain influence in a bit. You've got movement, essentially how far you can move, and then you've got fortifications, how many fortifications you can build on the board. Now, you've also got a scheme at the bottom. This is text that will give you specific uh, items that you can do or not do. But you go ahead, you play those cards, and you might want to move into a space with one of the units from one of the warring factions. This is going to let you kind of uh, have influence over it and, and manipulate them in certain ways. Now, both the Ocelots and the Macaw have unit cards that give different stats for them. Of course, you know, attack, defense, um, those sorts of things. You've also got rank. Uh, and then they've also got any special abilities or special conditions which trigger if certain things happen. Now, you've also got for these uh, both sides is you've got kind of a ploy deck, and then you also have a uh, kind of their task deck. And these are two different decks side by side. Well, what's going to happen is after the adventurers have gone, you're going to go ahead and draw these two cards and put them together. You put them together, and that forms their orders. The orders are going to say kind of which unit moves and any special conditions that are going to happen with regard to those units that turn. And that's going to essentially keep this war going. Meanwhile, you're running around trying to stop it. Now, when you play your resource cards during your turn and you use that influence, it lets you actually look at a number of cards from the top of one of those ploy decks or task decks, and you can rearrange them. You can manipulate them. Other players can also decide that they can play cards to add to help you play the, those influence cards. But you can only do that. You can only play an influence card if you are in the same spot, if your companion is one of those uh, units from one of the sides you're trying to influence. The other players, then, they don't have to be in that same spot. They can just help you out, but... That's how, essentially how you're going to influence those decks. Now, the army is going to do different things. They may you know, go to cover. They may attempt to attack. They may move. There's all sorts of things they may do during their turn. Now, once they're finished, uh, once all that's played out, you go to the status phase. 
Now, during the status phase, you're going to go ahead and do some housekeeping. One of the things you're going to look at is that motivation track. Now, again, you're trying to get their motivation down. You don't want them motivated for war. You want to demotivate them. But at the same time, you don't want them to completely surrender. So if ever one side, if their motivation track gets to zero, you're going to lose. But if you can get it down to one or a two, then if both sides have it a one or a two, you've won the game. You've successfully uh, managed to deflate this conflict and you prevent a war. So if you can do that, if you can deflate the conflict, if you can prevent the war, then you and your friends win Dawn of the Peacemakers. Now again, that's a very simple overview, very quick overview. There's a lot more going on just in that first scenario, and indeed there is a lot more going on in this game. This is a big, thick box. There's a lot of game here. Um, so first of all, the the, the I, I got to be honest, I'm not a big fan thematically of anthropomorphic animals. It's just one of those things that's never thrilled me. It is what it is. Uh, so so uh, the good folks at Snowdell contacted me. They asked me to review this. So anyway, I, you know, I thought, okay, well, I'll take a look at it. The theme kind of intrigued me. I, I, the idea of, of it being not just a war game, but almost a, not an anti-war game necessarily, but a kind of a, a, a talking people out of war game, trying to get people not to go to war. That actually really intrigued me quite a bit. Um, so I'm reading the rules, and one of the things I was scared about is you've got this AI system. And as you know, i played a lot of games that have a heavy AI system, and I hate games where they've got so much AI, it's like the game's playing you rather than you playing the game. And it takes forever to get through the AI phase. And that's not the case here. The AI, first of all, moves quickly. It's really quick to see what the AI is doing, to resolve that, and move on. So I really like that. But it's also... Um, Interesting. It's really kind of cool to see how the two cards come together. They'll activate certain units and, and, and engage in certain activities on their turn. And it's fun to, to see that play out um, because it is so quick, it, but it's interesting. It's always fun to see the way that works there. Now, as I say, I'm just looking at the, the first scenario here because I don't want to give anything away, any spoilers. But as I say, there is a ton of stuff here. The very first game you play, you've got these like envelope packets for your characters, and you kind of open that up and, and, and read the, 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 the what's inside. Um, but there's tons of sealed card decks. There are tons of sealed uh, envelopes in this game. This is a game that really wants you to explore it. And it's also nice because you can go ahead, pack that stuff away again, and still still play it. It won't be the surprise it was, or you know, maybe you can give it to someone else or something. They can play it and be surprised. But there's my point is there's a lot of surprises in this game. There's a lot of game in this game. And it was fun. My friends and I actually had, had fun with this game. Uh, got a kick out of it. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Dawn of the Peacemakers is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on TheDiscriminatingGamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and I'm really sorry I brought up Brad Pitt earlier, because, uh, you know, the first rule of Brad Pitt is <laughs> you don't talk about Brad Pitt. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help I say we play this game for the crown. It's not been two minutes and already I hate you.